Our yard's a mud hole this year with all the rain, and I um, got the golf cart stuck a couple of times and decided to replace the tires on it. But um, first, I'm going to show you I, the plastic on it was quite scratched up and um, foggy and stuff. So, got some of this Novus number one and number two polish that's supposed to remove the uh, scratches in plastic. So, I took the windshield off and kind of tough to see there, but it had a lot of real hazy spots where it looked like it must have been rubbed over the years with a uh, dirty cloth or something. And when you got into facing into the sun, you just couldn't see out of it. It just reflected off and glared. So I'm um, starting with this uh, number two polish, which basically is just kind of like a, a fine rubbing compound, it looks like. And you just have to keep, uh, you know, start by putting some on and rubbing it in good and just keep buffing it until it turns into a uh, powdery substance and then just polish it off with a clean rag after that. It does take a little bit of elbow grease and I mean it doesn't do a perfect job on it. It won't take out the deeper scratches and stuff but um, it seems to work pretty good. I had pretty good luck with it. Um, some areas I had to go around do twice and each time it got a little better so it does it does take a little bit of rubbing and stuff and but actually it did do the um do the job of getting rid of the deep scratches and i put the windshield back on the golf cart there and took the number one to it and this i'd used for years on my motorcycle windshield so i know this stuff does uh, polish it up good so there it is. It's not it's not a hundred percent perfect, but it really is um, ninety nine percent better than what it was. And this stuff did work good. And also uh, the body's all plastic, and that had a lot of uh, scrapes and scratches and dull spots on it and everything. So I just took the same stuff, the number two, to the body and went over that, and basically was able to get rid of. Uh, quite a bit of the uh, the dulling and the scratches and stuff I mean the deeper ones are still there uh, I don't I think you'd have to use the number three polish that they have to get them out but you know I figured seeing how this was a uh, plastic collar you know wasn't the painted on finish that I'd use this and it did come out pretty good so then um, after getting stuck the last time I went on Amazon and I ordered the lowest cost set of tractor tires that I could find on there um, the golf cart had 18 by 850 by 8 tires on it. I decided I wanted to go a little wider, so I went with an 18 by 9.5 by 8 tire, which is about an inch wider. It should be, and it should be the same OD. And I did order a couple of valve stems too, but it turned out I didn't need them. So um, time to go down and swap over to tires, and um, you can see those new hubcaps that I bought. They popped out awful easy because the clips on them were broken. A couple of the clips in there had just uh, improperly hardened and broke off. And then it's time to just pull the wheels off. And I must say I've got this old uh, Harbor Freight Impact gun I've been using for years now. And uh, this thing always works good. I never have a problem with it. So just four lugs hold these on. And... Um, there's what the old tires look like, and here's the new one up against it. And you can see there's about an inch wider thread on there, and um, I think it'll work better. So start changing the tires. I thought it was going to be a 10-minute job, and it turned into a, um, a two-hour job by the time I was done. First thing you have to do is break the bead on the wheels, and I just so happened to have put a pile of lumber where the handle for the bead breaker goes, so that turned into, you know, I could just use a little short handle on there. And the front side on them all broke pretty easy, but the back side was a pain because there's uh, no relief for it to pop down into. It's kind of like eight inches all the way, you know, down to that front relief, so uh, that I just had to keep working my way around the tire there to, to get that to, you know, break the bead. Now, these are the smallest tires I've ever tried changing on this machine. I know with the 12 inch and up size, it goes really easy. It's a, a five minute job and, um, you know, the bead usually pops right off and uh, it's easy to get the tire off. But these were a little bit more of a fight because of the, I think it's the size of the wheel being so small. It really didn't sit down on the machine quite right. It kind of balanced up a little bit, uh, a little bit up in the air. But 
I was able to, you know, just put it on the machine, and then you have that little mounting ring, and then the little hole down that screws on there. And this little Harbor Freight machine really has been a handy machine. I've used it for years. And then I'm just going to mix up some lubricant, a little bit of water, and some Dawn dishwashing soap. Uh, this seems to work good for me. Some people say don't use it because it, the water can't evaporate out of the wheel later and it makes it, you know, get rusty. But, um, you know, it saves you 15 bucks on a bottle of tire lube. So, uh, these little tires were, were pretty tough. Um, couldn't really just pop them in there and spin it around like you um, can on the larger tires. So, I had to kind of get another a second tire iron in there to hold back the bead from falling back on. And the um, the outside came off pretty good. And then the, uh, the inside was really a little too deep for the for the other tool to work uh, so I just kind of fought that with a tire iron and worked my way around and uh, got that off pretty easy then it's time to put some lube on the the new tire that's going on there and these are a four ply tire and they are extremely stiff and uh, this is where the trouble started trying to get these things on the wheel um, they're an inch wider and they're a heck of a lot stiffer and um, it was it turned into a pretty good fight the uh, standard tool that you use for popping them back on just wouldn't work on that angle because of the the you know the the size of the wheel compared to the depth of the tire so it, it turned into being a, a fight with a couple of uh, tire irons here for a while to get it back on there now the tires are a, a Max Auto tire. I've never heard of the brand, but um, they were only $126 for a set of four tires delivered. And they did take a long time to come because they were shipped by UPS from California. So it took like eight days to get them, but uh, you know, they look like a real nice tire and they should do the job. And there I finally got the bottom on there with the uh, tire irons and now it's time to go back and fight with the top trying to get that back on there and just the size of the tire in that one little uh, spot that's recessed to put the uh, the rest of the tire in as you're pulling it around made it kind of a tough job so I fought with it tried to thought I could just pop it on with tire irons and that really wasn't that easy a, a job with the um, I don't know if the beads are a little undersized on these or what, but it uh, it just wouldn't stretch out like a, a normal tire bead will, and it was uh, just, uh, you know, really trouble to get this thing on. And you can see how the tire's got to pull down in that groove down there to, to stretch around, and um, I, I can say that these 8-inch wheels really are a uh, beast when you have a stiff tire like this. and It doesn't help probably that the uh, tire is a little bit cold itself. So I fought it with tire irons and uh, finally I, uh, I got it started and was able to uh, use the, the standard tool there to pull it back around. and You can just see how, how tight everything is and how hard it is to stretch it in place. But, you know, I, I did eventually get it, and now it's time to blow it up. So you just have to unscrew that center thing, and that little hold-down four-fingered ring there comes right up and out. And then I thought I could just, seeing how with a wider tire, I thought the bead would just pop right back on, but I, uh, I just couldn't get it to seal. I had some leakage, so I put a, uh, I took a strap, one of those ratchet straps, and I cranked down on it. To seal the bead and that worked good and you want to release that before you blow it up too much because that strap can't take so can only take so much pressure and there it is the first one's all all mounted up and everything so I'm gonna start by inflating it to the max pressure here just to uh, you know try to get everything to seal right and then I'll drop I'm gonna drop the pressure down a couple psi later so with the first tire on, I'm just putting some of that uh, soap mixture around here to check for leaks. And basically the front side of it looked pretty good. 
didn't see any bubbles or anything. But when I went around the back side, I actually um, did notice some bubbles. Uh, there were two areas that had some bubbles on them. So what I always do is I just first thing I do is I'll take a hammer, take the rubber hammer and just beat on it a couple of times. And uh, that usually will get rid of the leak. And there you can see the, the bubbles are all gone now in that spot. And that, you know, just kind of helped to move the bead in place or, you know, make it seal a little better. And, um, did another spot that had a leak there, and uh, there it is all blown up. So, in the end, these tires were supposed to be the same diameter as the old ones, but they're about an inch bigger now that they're blown up, and they're about an inch wider on the thread there. So, hopefully they'll, they'll work out good, and, um time to put them back on the cart and you know just make sure they clear everything with no problems and they did uh, all the steering and everything cleared and uh, I like to just put things on by hand and just torque them down instead of using the impact wrench now to get that hubcap back on with those broken clips I just took some foam tape that I had some high density foam and cut some strips and I wound up just putting two layers of the foam on each area where the cliffs had broken and that I figured would hold them in place and it did do a good job of it in the end so there you can see the foam built up where there's no clips so that made it so I didn't have to you know mess with new clips or anything like that and they still fit snugly in place and they uh, you know stayed in there pretty good now So, uh, you know, that's the first one all done, and, you know, it's time to go around to the back and just jack that up and start pulling that apart next. Now, when I put that rear seat on it, I found out later if you put two people on the back and two people in the seat on the golf cart, you need uh, heavier springs, otherwise the tires would rub. So, there you can see I put on a set of uh, four-leaf springs, which really was just an easy, you know, swap out for the single leaf that was there before. And that gives it plenty of clearance, so there's no rubbing. So, now it's time to just go back and fight the second pair of tires. And I will say that uh, I, I thought it would only take a couple minutes because they were so small, but it turned out being small um, actually made it take longer. And our yard is such a mud hole from all the rain. Actually, we're getting another inch of rain today, and all week long it's supposed to rain, it looks like. So i um, hoping that these turf-type tires will help a little bit to... Uh, you know keep the car from getting stuck because these golf cart type tires you just drive into the mud a little bit and you're stuck they just start spinning and uh, you've got to pull it out now this one rim I found had a, a dent in it around the rim there it looks like they must have changed it one time and hit it with a tire machine or something so I just took an adjustable wrench and was able to slowly work my way around and bend it back so it matched uh, you know the rest of the radius there I tried hitting it with a hammer first, but it wouldn't move, and this seemed to be the easiest way to keep things from bending. At the same time, all day today, there have been these uh, groups of four military helicopters flying over, one group after the next. I don't know what's going on in the world, but they uh, definitely seem to be moving some troops and machinery around. So here it is. Uh, got the new tires on it. Took it across the mud, and actually it didn't get stuck. It didn't sink in, and... Um, they do look a little better than the tires that were on it. And they're, you know, just about the same size and everything. And they didn't cost a whole lot, but they do make it a whole different cart when you get in the mud. They really do um, help keep it going. I need some mud flaps there. You can see now that it, it'll go through the mud. And this is kind of where I took it across the yard. You can see before I changed the tires, it actually would get stuck going up in there. And uh, the tire, the ground is just so soaked around here. So a little bit of cleaning up, a little bit of polishing up, and basically everything kind of looks like new now. And, um, you know, it's ready to, to go through the summer with it. So I'm hoping we won't have to pull it out of the mud holes anymore. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.